What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Road Reflection. I'm your host, Chris Mohan. I'm back <laughs> after uh, after a little little hiatus that I didn't didn't intend on taking. By the way, uh, I definitely didn't intend on taking that hiatus. Uh, give you guys a little update on what what happened there as I'm grabbing my notebook. Um, my laptop. Uh, was having a lot of it uh, randomly too. Like I did the video um, about you know everything with Tulsi and everything, and uh, I was working on my computer as I normally would, and I basically got home and the following day I'm trying to charge my computer back up, which had like all of a sudden died. And I was noticing that it wasn't charging itself properly. And I was like, this seems like a battery issue. I've had enough Macs that, you know, I've, uh, that that I've seen this sort of stuff happen. And and it seems like this is is an issue uh, where the battery is either failing or needs to be replaced or something, right? Like, and I tried different um, plug points. To make sure that it wasn't like a charger issue. And I kept doing the same thing. I had to call Apple. And the earliest they could take me was Saturday. And they were basically like, hey. So that was a Thursday. And they basically were like, hey. Uh, yeah, don't don't use your computer until we can figure out what the hell's going on. So I couldn't put out my podcast. I couldn't put out Taboo Table Talk. Which I'm going to release those episodes this Thursday, and you know, I'm I'm basically not taking a a a, a real kind of end of year break um, that I that I normally that I normally kind of would. Um, so uh, I'm kind of gonna try to just d- d- roll out the content as I normally would um, in in this in this scenario, and because of this thing that happened, right? Uh, and so I, I went in on Saturday and they were basically like, we don't have any other option to diagnose it here at the store, which is normally what they would do. Um, and they would keep it stocked and all that kind of stuff. So they have to send it to a special repair facility. And they basically sent that out. And on Tuesday, this last Tuesday, I got a phone call. That basically said, hey, it, your battery is donezo and needs to be replaced with Apple Care. It shouldn't cost you anything as long as there's no water damage on your computer. And, you know, my computer kind of sits on top of a, a little elevated thing, so it, it's far away from any sort of liquid at all. Um, everything was fine. They basically said it would take 7 to 10 days to fix this thing, which is a long time. <laughs> Did not have my computer, especially on the week where all of the stimulus stuff was happening. They were talking about Assange and like all the stuff was happening. And I was like, fuck, I can't comment on anything. I can't do, I can't make a video. I can't do anything. So I was really frustrated and stressed out about this computer thing. And on top of that, like I couldn't do any of the, like the work that I would do, like, you know, the design stuff or any, like I just didn't have anything. So I tried to do what I could with my phone and, you know, like read and keep up on things as I could and kind of took the week to, to relax. So I ended up having like an impromptu break. And fortunately, two of the days were like Christmas Eve and Christmas where I don't think a lot of people were, were really doing much of anything anyway. But uh, definitely a tumultuous, a very stressful event. Finally got my computer back on Saturday uh, and as, as you know, it's just been catch up city since then. Like that's all I've been doing is catching up um, on you know getting my website up together, getting all the, the the stuff I wanted to do by the end of the year together. Like I wanted to you know uh, I, I make these little cards, um, like info cards for my videos, right? Like the forkful videos. Um, if you if you've seen them, you see these. Uh, repetitive kind of like infographic cards that that's kind of like a cover for what the topic of the week is and I was going to try to take those and turn those into like little postcards get them printed um, 
And one, I could just leave them up as like a, a, a sale on Bandcamp. That was the thing I was going to do. And then I was going to send them to all of the people that have become sustaining members this year um, as, as little gifts. Now, I, I still want to do that, and I'm, and I'm probably going to do my best to get that done. But, you know, it's stuff like that where I was like, man, I, I finally had the time where it was like, you know, around, around Christmas, around the holidays, I usually do these kind of projects, and I can't even fucking do that. And now I'm behind on everything. So it's kind of, it's, it's very stressful. But the computer's back. Everything's good to go. Uh, the battery's working. They replaced the display. They fixed up some of the keys. Uh, they, you know, updated my trackpad. Like, they, they did the works. And, you know, like, everybody at the Apple store was super cool. I always find, like, the employees of most places are, are pretty cool, despite the fact that they're the company CEO's shitbags. Um, you know, so... Uh, that happened and then over the course of the last few months um i have uh i've been i've been thinking about this for for a while um in terms of like i might have to get a job like a job job um like be employed by somebody else kind of a job and you know in the beginning of the pandemic i was like i get i mean there's there's really nothing available and um, I didn't really know what I was going to do, so I kind of shifted everything to doing these videos, the, these ranty videos, um, and I was noticing, like, you know, every people were having a tough time, so that's why I was going to do the check-ins as I'm doing now to just kind of encourage people to be open about what they're going through because I was open about what I was going through, and, you know, a lot of people came through to help, uh, I, I received an overwhelming amount of kindness that I, I, I genuinely wasn't expecting and it floated me through, right? Like, like the, the sustaining memberships, the donations, um, and then eventually doing the, the, the shows that became weekly shows, um, we're all, we're all doing well and, you know, and then I hit that burnout point. And, and it sucks because, like, really what I was doing, like, I wanted to do those shows. I wanted to figure out how to how to continue doing comedy and, and, and still making a living doing comedy on a virtual setting. Um, but, and I gave half of what I made to various grassroots organizations uh, that I thought was doing good work that was doing important things. A bunch of them were mutual aids that were trying to help communities, especially at a time when the government really doesn't seem to be giving a shit about it. Um, and I, and I was doing okay, but the inevitability was I'm, I'm going to need to, you know, find some alternative form of employment, you know, being that this is a long-term thing. Like what's happening with this pandemic is going to go on for much longer than what any of us ever anticipated. And that's even from the beginning, right? Like my estimates were, oh, okay, we're going to see a wave two, but there might be a window of opportunity in August or September that I'll be back on the road, even if it is for a short period of time. And, and then very quickly, you know, that notion disappeared. And now I'm, I'm thinking like next August is when really things will kick back up. You know, um, we might we might see some some people feeling a little bit more comfortable in June or July. But I really don't see. And this is me being very, very optimistic about next fall. You know, end of summer next fall is really when things are going to kick back up on a um, on a level where everybody's feeling comfortable coming out to be a part of any sort of live experience. So with that in mind, with the fact that I've, I've got, you know, uh, a change in my living circumstances, which honestly would have happened anyway, because, you know, there's, there's members of my family that don't take this thing as seriously. And my, my dad happens to be one of them. And, you know, if, if you've, if you've known me long enough or, or listened to my stand-up, like, my dad and I don't get along very well. 
Um, and you know, eventually, like I would have, I would have moved out anyway and been in the current living situation, living, um, living situation that I'm in now. Where the, the house that I'm in now is probably where I would have landed anyway. Um, so I've got that. I've got these bills to pay the, for my car and everything, uh, and just living expenses. And I tried to like maintain what I had, right? Like some of you guys know that I take care of this elderly lady. Um, and even that to me was, um, I know my face just got super glowy because of the sunlight, but, uh, even that to me was, was kind of taking a step backwards from where I was. And now we're taking another step backwards because this is very much where I was in like 2013, 2014, where, um, you know, the, the, the story of that is I got fired from a job. I went on unemployment and I basically decided that I was going to just spearhead into comedy as much as I could. And I, and I got some headway, but it was like not enough of a headway, uh, that I could sustain my, you know, like my entire livelihood just off comedy. So I was like, okay, I'll get a part-time job. And I did, I got a very flexible, really cool and fun part-time job, um, that was, very understanding of my comedy touring schedule uh, and allowed me to tour, allowed me to come back and work these flexible hours. Um, but I still didn't like having, you know, this other thing that I had to do, that I had to commit to uh, on a daily basis that I was at home, that I couldn't just produce comedy. Like I couldn't just do comedy and sustain myself. And it irked me. And, you know, I finally got to that point where the, the work environment was changing and kind of getting a little bit more toxic because the, the people that were cool and good and understanding of what was going on with everybody's schedule uh, were, were all getting pushed out of, of, the, of, of the company anyway. And that's when I would say around like maybe 2015 was really when I, when, when I just fucking went full ham into comedy and, and have been making a living and paying my bills doing comedy. So because I don't have that right now, um, I'm, I'm going to end up getting a, a, some kind of a part-time job. Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure what exactly that's going to be. I know I've spent a, a good chunk of this video kind of giving this update, but I felt like it's important uh, to talk about this because, you know, I, I know there's some dedicated viewers to these, to, to uh, whatever ne platform you're watching me on, uh, YouTube, um, Rockfin, Facebook, whatever it is. And basically what that will do is if I do end up getting this second part-time job in order to sustain uh, just keeping on top of my financial situation, I'm going, I'm not going to have the opportunity to make as much content and provide as much commentary and do as many creative things as I possibly want to. So that's coming down the pipeline. Um, I've already kind of, you know, I think, I think my brain was a little defensive about taking this part-time situation as is, uh, just because it's, it's not what I've wanted to to do. I've 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 I have worked really hard at making comedy my full time job. I've worked really hard hustling, and you know, touring across this country for the better part of a decade, uh, and and making that my employment. Being self employed through the through, through comedy and through the people that have believed in what I'm doing. Um. So. I, I figured it would be it would be important to talk about this uh, in this context. There's really no escape from this sunlight at all uh, on this bridge. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I, you know, I, I thought it was important because you guys have supported me through all this and uh, to to know what's going on uh, with these channels, why the videos might be decreasing from you know uh, four to. 10 videos in a week to like two to three, you know, uh, it's important for you, for you guys to know why. Um, obviously if the financial situation's 
for me change and I'm able to use comedy to supplement my uh, income completely, I, that would be a game changer for sure. Uh, but right now, that's that's per- not particularly happening. Um, if you want to, there's there's links to make contributions, become a sustaining member, donations, and all of those are incredibly appreciated. Uh, you know, and things are kind of changing in terms of uh, my personal life a lot as well. Uh, and like I said, there's really no end. Like I don't, I don't know when the end of this this pandemic is really going to be. I see this going further, and those are going to be some of the topics of discussion over the course of the week. Um, that I'm that I'm going to talk about in these videos, uh, but yeah, it's 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 not the first decision I, uh, decision that I wanted to make. I resisted it. I tried to come up with various different ideas and um, different ways to to make comedy. I'm still going to do virtual shows um, and 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 kind of m- prioritize them to the best of my ability, um, but. It, it became difficult to continue to do that. Uh, so that's that's part of the reason why, you know, I got to, I got to, you know, pay the bills. And, and unfortunately, that's going to mean that I'm going to have to take some kind of a part-time job. I don't know what that's going to be exactly. I put in some applications. We'll see what comes out of it. And, uh, and we'll go from there. Um, yeah, it's, it's difficult because I don't want to, I don't want to take that step backward. And, uh, and I'm gonna have to and it's it's it was it it was a difficult decision for me to make um, because it, it also kind of meant that you know uh, as much as this channel has progressed over the course of the last year alone um, I'm already stifled as it is and I'm one of the lower content creators and and the opportunity for me to like push forward and gain um, newer viewers and all that kind of stuff is is a little stifled, and that really sucks. Um, but uh, it's got to be what, the the way that it is for right now. I, I don't think it's a, it's a permanent thing. It's gonna suck. I'm gonna be tired again a lot more. <laughs> Not that I wasn't tired already, but there were other other mitigating circumstances why I was tired over the last couple of years a lot, and why my content suffered. And I was finally getting back on track of like putting out regular content. I was really fucking excited about it. Um, but, uh, you know, I gotta, I gotta take care of some financials and, uh, and unfortunately that means, you know, uh, decreasing the amount of stuff that I will be able to put out. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, hopefully when all this ends, people will still come out to see live shows and it won't be a total start or restart of, uh, of the touring days, um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sure that's not why you guys are particularly viewing this video. I have a bunch of topics um, to to discuss today, and I I want to try to get to as many of them as possible. Uh, w- w- we will see how much I get to, but I kind of packed a lot of notes, so it'll be the video for the next two days essentially. Uh, so sorry about the, the long winded kind of announcement up at the top of the video. Uh, but I felt like it was important to, to discuss it. Uh, anyway, um, let's dive in. Uh, first, first topic of discussion that I want to get to is, um, really what the weight of pardoning Julian Assange and Edward Snowden would be and why, and why it's such a threat to the establishment, right? We, you, you've seen a lot of people talk about it. Lee Camp, myself, Ron Placone, Eleanor Goldfield, uh, virtually anybody that is anti-establishment, anti-imperialist, that understands and knows what Julian Assange has done and, and the impact of his work. Um, and those that have been following the trial, the show trial, this wasted extradition trial, uh, that has been torturing him, um, know that this movement is growing. That a lot more people uh, want Julian Assange to be pardoned by Donald Trump. You know, uh, especially when every November we fucking pardon turkeys. We pardon turkeys every fucking November and it becomes this big deal and the media does these puff pieces about them to make everybody feel good. Oh, look at this one turkey that's not going to 
Oh, he's going to get to live out the days as a, as a stud turkey uh, until next year. Oh, but the pardon only lasts one. Even for our fucking turkeys, we still we give them one extra year to be like, you got to you got to fucking get out of here, man. You got to find a way to get to Canada or Mexico where they don't know what Thanksgiving is. And and that's the only way that you can survive, uh, you know, this this one year pardon that these presidents will give you. Um, but at least we pardon the turkey. Whereas real journalists that have never had to retract a story, such as Julian Assange, were like, oh, Russia, oh, but he's Assad. What about the Assad and the Democratic? He, he ruined democracy by revealing how we fuck over other countries and we're spying on our own citizens and committing constitutional crimes. Oh, but Russia... That's all we have to say about that. Every time. Every time this guy gets brought up, there's always some kind of bullshit smear that people have to throw out there. Well, here's the thing, guys. There's a bipartisan support to pardon Julian Assange and Edward Snowden for what they've done. Particularly Snowden. I think Snowden is a little bit uh, easier for some people to swallow than uh, than someone like Julian Assange. Um uh, Despite the fact that I think they're they're equally important and and equally should be pardoned by uh, by Trump, uh, which you know all in all, if if that actually does happen, uh, would fucking piss off the elites to no to no end, um, and I think that would be that would kind of be funny, uh, but you know, you, you have you have Republicans like Matt Getz from Florida and Rand Paul. You have Glenn Greenwald. You have you have members of the ACLU. I mean, this has become like a bi- like it crosses political ideologies because they all recognize the importance of pardoning these people at this point. Now, Snowden particularly has advocated to pardon Assange over him uh, because of his health condition. Uh, Julian Assange is effectively being tortured. That's 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 basically what's happened. Uh, it is it is psychological, emotional torture. They spied on him. Um, they have kept him in Belmarsh Prison. They're they're physically torturing him there by you know not giving him uh, like proper uh, like a like proper things to, like heat himself up. Like he's cold all the time. Um, he's he's definitely got mental health issues for sure because of all this uh the you know the belmarsh prison has uh uh, has had many guards get covid and they still won't give him a mask or let him be outside or any of that sort of stuff even though by the way he's done his term he was he was done in may uh so he could have he could have been released and they didn't because they claimed that he was a flight risk which is like where the fuck is he gonna go uh, you could have gotten gotten him an apartment, uh, or or had him stay with somebody, or just not in prison. Especially during the pandemic, where the fuck was he gonna go? So it was a bullshit charge, and they are and they're like very blatantly torturing this dude. So, you know, Edward Edward Snowden basically. Um, Edward Snowden basically wants Assange pardoned because his his health is deteriorating, and that's like he's like I don't want this dude to die. Uh, so it's more important for Assange to be pardoned than than me, you know. So which is which is a very noble thing to do. Now. This is this whole pardoning Assange thing is is bad for the Biden administration. If you remember, by, the the reason why Edward Snowden is in the the exiled state that he's in is because of Obama and Biden. They waited till he was in Moscow. So basically, so here's I talked about this in in one of the fork polls that I did, but you know Snowden needed to find some kind of asylum because. 
they basically claimed that he was a treasonous traitor that, you know, was a secret commie bringing down America's freedoms from the inside when it was just like, no, he revealed illegal surveillance that a federal court has deemed is constitutionally illegal, is a violation of the Fourth Amendment, that you can't just spy on Americans all the time. Um, so they basically waited for him to, you know, he was trying to get to Ecuador for asylum, similar to Assange, and they knew that he would have to take a particular flight route, and they grounded him in, in Russia, in Moscow. Uh, they also grounded the plane of a Bolivian president because they thought that he was going to be on that flight when they had no proof that he was going to be on that flight. Like, they did some pretty fucked up shady things just because this guy revealed that the American government was spying on its people. And he didn't reveal that information to, um, to like, intelligence agencies, like foreign intelligence agencies. He revealed it to a journalist. And he, and he very methodically did that, too. Like, he thought about it. Like, he thought about who he was going to release this information to. And... He picked Glenn Greenwald because he figured Glenn Greenwald was the right choice because he was he was going to be ethical about it. He was going to re- he was going to actually report on it without any sort of biases, without any sort of uh, political ideology behind it, and twist the narrative in any particular way. So he, he releases the information to them, but what is the narrative that gets spun around? Because he got grounded in Russia, everybody thinks that he's a Russian spy. And the uh, Biden, the Obama-Biden administration did nothing to disprove that. They just kind of let that shit run. They were like, good, let that fucking, let that story run. And so much so that Liz Cheney has come out against the pardon Snowden, pardon Assange movement to say that uh, Snowden is a, is a Chinese actor, which has been debunked a thousand times over. But because the people that stranded him in Russia aren't really going to come forward and make any sort of statements because the Obama administration hates whistleblowers just as much as the Trump administration does, just as much as the Hillary camp does, just as much as fucking pretty much anybody that is a government official. They fucking hate them. They hate whistleblowers because they want to commit the crimes and get away with it. And the whistleblowers don't let them do that. These real publishers and journalists like Julian Assange don't let them do that. They don't let them just commit crimes, fuck over the middle class, fuck over working class people, and just and just run amok. They're a threat to their power. Susan Rice, who is part of Biden's cabinet, um, has called... The support for Snowden and Assange is the lowest thing that the GOP can do. Actually, it's it might be one of the better things that the that the Republicans have done. I mean, the Republicans are dog shit, and the Democrats are equally as much dog shit. But, you know, a couple of them coming out and saying, yeah, we need to pardon these people because it's you know, this is this is not a good look for America. It kind of feels like America is slipping into this authoritarian state that's not about freedom and democracy. Even they fucking see that. And it's a threat to them. This bipartisanship over Julian Assange, over Edward Snowden needing to be pardoned, um, is is really a threat to to the deep state to the to the establishment elites to the oligarchs that control american politics the way that they control it we're using money and lobbyists cuz once they do they'll have to admit that the what what the NSA was doing was wrong and have to pretty much collapse that program or or the NSA in general This pardon would effectively screw over the Biden administration's war on whistleblowers, which they 100% want to do, by the way, is they don't want whistleblowers to be talking about these big issues. They don't want people to support them. So they will run the same fucking gamut of bullshit excuses that Republicans do. 
right? They'll call them socialists. They'll call them uh, traitors, spies. Uh, you don't do that to a government, blah, blah, blah. All the shit that we hear. Biden administration is no better in terms of that. And now if they do, they're, they're, there's going to be whistles blown during the Biden administrations, for sure. There's always whistles blown. They can't... Um, if Trump pardons Assange and Snowden, the Biden administration then loses leverage on dealing with whistleblowers in the same uh, authoritarian manner that the Obama administration did and that the Trump administration did. So they don't want this pardon to go through. So you have people like Susan Rice come out and start defaming it and, and then use this whole us versus them uh, you know, Republican Democrat ideology. Which goes against what Joe Biden says, right? Joe Biden's like, I'm the uniter. I can I can cross the aisles and get more shit done. It's like, relax. Another crime bill isn't what we need. Joe. Jailbait Joe. We don't need you reaching across the aisles to put more authoritarian laws in place. So just chill out. What it does, it calls out all the faux progressives, right? There's people that have labeled themselves progressives that aren't really progressives. They they label themselves progressive to to pull the the uh, you know the the disenchanted Bernie people, and they they kind of are like, oh, but we're prog- come on over, look how progressive we are with. With our, with our no criminal justice reform, no health care policies. <laughs> so, here we are. What, it, what, what it'll really do is it'll solidify freedom of press. That's what it'll really do. Um, I, I mean, I, I find it fascinating. Right, we we talk about press freedoms. We've been talking about press freedoms in this country, especially over the last four years. Right, uh, fake news has always been on the tips of every any tongue, especially when especially when it comes to whistleblowers, especially when it comes to journalists revealing shit. They always like, oh, they're liars or fake news. I mean, this has been, but this has been on a more on the forefront over the last uh, the course of the last four years, and. You know, you you saw how liberals and and even some progressives freaked out over Jim Acosta from CNN losing his press pass after uh, an altercation with uh, one of Trump's aides or something. And he got kicked out and he lost his press pass. And it was like, oh, my God, what an attack on the press. And right now, the American empire is holding a publisher and a journalist. They're torturing him in the U.K., and, and the Democrats, the king of all Democrats, somebody in his cabinet is saying that this is the worst GOP move of all time and trying to divide the public. If they cared about press freedoms the way that they scream about it, this would be a big deal. If Joe Biden truly believes in press freedoms, he would be advocating for the, for the pardoning of Assange. And it would throw these liberals for such a loop if Trump did it, because then if they do any, if, if a whistleblower comes out during the Obama administration, or sorry, the Biden administration, what's the difference? But uh, if they come out, uh, they can't be as strict on them because it's going to be a bad look when everybody's like, wait a minute, didn't didn't Donald Trump, the wannabe authoritarian the, the neo-fascist gangster in the White House, as Cornel West calls him. Didn't that guy pardon Assange? Didn't that guy pardon uh, uh, Edward Snowden? And these guys who are, are uh, these Democrats who claim to be better than them are still trying to imprison them. Wait a minute, what the fuck is going on here? It's a bad look for the Democrats. Uh, uh, so they are going to do everything they can to try to sway public opinion. I hope he does it. We have like three weeks. Why the fuck not? I hope he fucking does it. Uh, 
All right, uh, I want to move to the next topic. This might be a shorter little segment too, but um, so the, we've seen a major resurgence in in cases here, uh, especially in the United States. There's like a mutant strain that's there, which I'll get to that in a minute as well. But temperature really seems to have something to do uh, with the way. COVID spreads, right? Like, it's, it's, it's more contagious in the cold. And uh, we got to wonder, like, why, right? Why, why is it that the fall and winter are when it's, it's going to be more contagious? We saw, uh, you know, early on, there was, like, weather maps that they drew where it was like, oh, this is where the temperature was colder, and this is where we're seeing all these spreads. That's why New York City was getting hit so hard, and Boston and all that. Well, uh, according to an immunologist named uh, Mary Brock, I read this article she wrote, uh, it's because of a lipid layer, a fatty layer, that protects the, the, um, the, the proteins in, in, in the virus that allows it to survive longer in colder conditions. Um, that's, why, that's why COVID spreads so much in colder conditions. Because the lipid layer is not gonna is not gonna melt off, right? In the heat, like it's like bu- like the way she says it is like butter, uh, butter and heat's gonna melt. Uh, whereas in the cold, it stays strong. That's why you refrigerate butter; it stays it stays consistent. So it's basically the same principle here. Um, and fun fact: that's what the mRNA vaccine is doing too. By the way, is they're using a lipid layer to protect the mRNA uh, information, so it can it can you know your body can create its own. Some, somewhat create its own vaccine against uh, against COVID because the antigens are so temporary. Now, the other reason that, that these viruses spread too, this is not the be-all, end-all. There's, there's always multiple things when it comes to these sort of things. Usually in the wintertime, we're spending more time inside, which means that we're, we're kind of breathing the same somewhat recirculated air all the time, right? We're not really letting fresh air in because it's cold outside, and it's, you know, why would you? Uh, even though I've, I've definitely opened the window in the cold because sometimes my, the, the room we were in will end up getting kind of hot overnight and we'll open the window. But anyway, the, the point being, a lot of people are stuck inside with each other. So if one person gets sick, the other, per, the other people that share a household are, are, are more than likely to get sick because they're kind of breathing uh, the same air um, and, you know, are, are part of the same ventilation system. So that's another reason why that happens. Um, and, and, you know, during the wintertime, it's, it's really hard to get outdoors. It's really hard to just go out and do stuff. Especially now, like we're we're not going out and doing things because it, it because Epic makes it even more dangerous, right? Like that's you can't go to a venue and be around a hundred people, and if ten of them are sick, like they're gonna get everybody else sick. So, um, and, and especially as fast as this virus is moving, uh, it's not it's not it's not it's not a good idea, you guys. Not a good idea. So, the other the other thing that I've been seeing is you know oh the mrna vaccine is they're trying to alter your dna and they're trying to control your eventually that technology has a possibility of 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 you know being developed i but this is not that technology uh mrna they're they're messenger rna right like they they deliver information to cells uh, you know, cells want to digest them. They want to break them down and get the information and, and start doing what, what uh, you know, the information says to, to help the body in, in some way. So these vaccines aren't really altering DNA. What they're doing is they're sending a piece of information into the cell to say, this is what you need uh, to create this vaccine in your, in your own body, to create these antibodies, to create... Uh, this way to fight this virus. Um, normally, in, with vaccines, they're hitting you with the disease itself, like dead cells of the virus itself. Uh, so your body will create natural defenses. So your body starts creating the antigens that it needs. This is going about it a little differently. It's sending packets of information to your cell. 
so you so your body can create what it needs to to build up its own defenses um, and then it and then your body just has that information in there uh, which is great and you know I I hope it works uh, but in and, and you know like I said at the top of this video I, I don't I don't believe that this is going to be the that this vaccine is the only thing that we need in order to prevent another COVID scare or another pandemic of sorts that'll that'll cripple everything, um, especially when you have a, uh, a government run by uh, a greed-driven capitalist system. Um, I don't think this vaccine is going to be the be-all and all. But part of that is also because you know you have you have people that aren't going to take the vaccine. Uh, you know, we have to contend with the vaccine deniers. And um, they're talking about a vaccine passport, which I have conflicted feelings about. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's going to be a very difficult journey through this. So just because this vaccine's out here doesn't mean that this whole thing is saved. Uh, you do have this new quote unquote mutant strain out of UK. It's not really a mutant strain, by the way. It's just that the virus evolved over time. It's what they do. Uh, I, I believe coronaviruses, and especially novel coronaviruses, evolve frequently. Uh, I might be wrong about that, but I'm but I'm fairly certain. I, I do remember reading that somewhere. I I would have to double check. Don't quote me. But this is just like another evolution of the virus itself. The the best and quickest thing to do. Uh, would have been to halt and quarantine all flights going in and out of the UK. In the EU, they did that very quickly. In America, they didn't. Uh, so I'm sure it's here uh, and it'll spread because this is a this is a fucking backwards country. And you know what that's going to do is is render this vaccine kind of useless which again part of the reason why I'm saying this vaccine isn't the be all end all what really needs to start happening especially in the United States is to completely rethink the philosophy that this country has been built on you can't sustain a country that thrives on endless consumption with limited resources. That math doesn't add up and you don't have to be a genius in math. You can still be a country that is 45th in math and understand that that, that doesn't equal anything. That, 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 that's not, that's not, that doesn't make any sense. We have to, we have to return to a point we have to start thinking about more, more community-driven efforts for humanity, period. So what is that? I mean, that means that you have to govern with compassion. You have to govern with empathy. The people that have a lot need to give up some of their comforts to ensure that the rest of us have a little more when the rest of us don't have anything at all. That is not how capitalism is built. That's not how America is built. America is built on a very individualistic platform. It's all about me and it's all about my comfort. There's just the notion that masks became a political argument. Right? Where, it's, where they were like, well, don't think about it just for yourself. Think about it for... Your grandma. Think about it for, uh, you know, your your loved one that's sick, that has an autoimmune disease, and even then, a lot of people were like, "Fuck that shit," you know. So we have, to, if we're gonna survive this thing, if we're gonna ensure that this thing doesn't come back. 
We need a fundamental change in our philosophy. By the way, scientists knew that the virus was going to, quote-unquote, mutate, evolve, change. And, and because they change is part of the reason why vaccines tend to take a little bit longer to get developed. That's why they're not rushed. And I do believe that these vaccines were, were rushed. Um, I'm not sure what the... Again, I'm, I, don't, I don't know what is going to happen once people take them. Uh, before it gets to the mass public, we do have uh, doctors and nurses and elderly people taking them to essentially see what the reactions are going to be. And there's some people that have had some allergic reaction. Uh, and they basically are like, they're like, oh, well, if you have allergic reactions to vaccines in general uh, or any vaccine at all, that's, that's probably what's causing this reaction anyway. Okay, well, what are you going to do to combat that? That means that there's a population of people that can't take the vaccine. What are, what are we doing to help those people is the question. I don't know. Uh, more research has to be done. Well, yeah, that's kind of the way science works. Trial error. There's a third vaccine that's now in play. I think, I think Oxford has a vaccine that they're putting, in, putting into play here. We're going to have numerous choices, but again... You know, if we live in the same conditions uh, that we're living in now, under under the pandemic, where people are still suffering, where people are still looking out only for themselves, they're not really caring about what's going on with their communities, well, this thing is due to spike up again. It it's we're we're seeing this new strain pop up and. Instead of taking precautions and saying, okay, we might have to go into a lockdown again in two months. What are we going to do to help the businesses that aren't doing okay? And if Congress's answers isn't monthly stimulus checks uh, sent to every single American citizen, everybody that has a, a Social Security number or tax identification number, then we haven't learned a damn thing. And these vaccines will become pointless because then now this new strain of COVID, this new strain of the novel coronavirus, will start to spread. We have to take care of not just each other, but this planet as well. So... You know, we, we have to... I, I've always believed that our, a human being's primary role is to be stewards of the planet. Uh, and I don't think we have done a very good job of that, being stewards of the planet, that is. So, I, I mean, and now I, I do believe that, you know, there is an opportunity for us to course correct. This entire time could have been a way to figure out how to... Uh, make alternative energies more uh, feasible. You could have done a million things, but we still decided to pursue fossil fuels. We put a president in place that talks to climate activists and tells him to vote for somebody else. You know, it has to fundamentally change. We have to fundamentally change the way we've been living our lives. If you want to get through this pandemic, that's Partly, what's going to have to start happening? I'm not taking. I'm not saying don't don't think about yourself or don't think about self care or any of that sort of stuff. It's usually where these arguments end up going when you make a statement like that. That's not what I'm saying. We have taken it to that extreme of individualism. We need to pull ourselves away from that. We need to have a balancing act where we can take time that we need for ourselves and say, hey, I'm having a bad mental health week. And people around you go, well, what do you need? Do you need to be, if you need to be left alone, that's cool. But we're here when, when instead of being like, oh, you're sick, you're broken, whatever. 
but know that when somebody else in your community needs you, that, that you're able to be there for them within your quarantine, you know, you're not just doing it for yourself. You're doing it for yourself and your community. That's, that's where we need to be as a society. It's not just for you, your individual freedoms and all that kind of shit. Your individual freedoms are still here. But if everybody in your community falls sick because you decided your freedoms were more important, we're going to see this happen again. Uh, I think that's where we're going to close things off. Uh, yeah, not the most hopeful video I made. <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you for tuning in. If uh, if you're in a position where you can help financially uh, and, you be, and you would like to, you want to make a, a monthly contribution or a one-time contribution, um, there are several ways to do that on my website. If you go to krishmohanhaha.com, it's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com uh, slash donate. That's where you'll find um, all of the different ways to make uh, any sort of donations. But if you can't, that's totally cool. Uh, but just make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Um, I'm going to be posting videos as much as I can. Uh, and, you know, it's topics like what we were discussing today. And, um, yeah, yeah. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit the like button and make sure you share this out. Uh, send this to your friends. Send this to your enemies. Send this to anybody that you feel like would enjoy stuff like this. And I've got uh, like three or four more topics in this notebook tomorrow. And I think tomorrow's video will probably be a little longer uh, depending on... Uh, I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow, so I, it'll, it'll be depending on that. But I, I will be getting through all the notes that I've taken. Uh, I will probably also be putting out a new... A bonus Taboo Table Talk episode that's going to be just a dispatch because I missed uh, the two weeks. So I'm going to be putting out a bonus one uh, as like an end of year kind of thing. And I might do one more as like a, hey, we're beginning of the new year thing. So keep on the lookout for those. I'm going to try to get those out. Um, other than that, yeah. Again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Dot com. Thank you to everybody that uh, watches this stuff, shares this stuff, has c- contributed uh, over the over the year, over the years uh, to this channel, to to helping me um, con- develop, you know, what I'm doing, um, and have supported me all through all the all, all of the crazy endeavors that I've taken. Um, yeah, seriously, I appreciate you guys a lot. So, uh, without any further ado, let's let's bring this video to an end, and I hope that I will see you guys tomorrow. And I hope to see you guys on the road. Bye, guys.